Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Cabarrus County Schools Board of Education regularly scheduled business meeting for Monday, September the 16th, 2013. I'd like to call the meeting to order at this time, and our opening ceremony tonight is being presented by the uh, Air Force Junior ROTC cadets from Central Cabarrus High School, and those that are participating in our color guard tonight, the left guard is Cadet Captain Paula Munoz. The American flag bearer is Cadet <coughs> Lieutenant Colonel Ashley Haas. The North Carolina flag bearer is Cadet Staff Sergeant Savon Lane. The right guard is Cadet Senior Airman Cortez Steele. And the cadets tonight are being led by Lieutenant Colonel Nelson English, United States Air Force, retired, and also Master Sergeant Carlos De La Cruz, the United States Air Force, retired. Would you all stand as we have the ceremony? I'm always so proud of the junior ROTC cadets, and uh, unfortunately, we're going to lose three of those those cadets. This they're our seniors, and so when they finish up and graduate, I guess they'll be going on to bigger and better things. But they sure have served us well. Okay, the uh, next order of the uh, meeting tonight is the setting of the agenda, and that is, uh, board members, you've had the agenda. We worked on it in the work session, and then we've uh, got everything cut out for us tonight. Do I have a motion that the agenda be approved as presented? So moved. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, the motion is, I mean, the agenda is, is approved as it is presented. The first order of our regular business tonight now is the recognitions part. And this is where Miss Ronnie Boone will come to the podium for 4.1. This is the Impact Through Education Awards. And, uh, you know, we're glad that we're able to do this. And she'll tell you a little bit more about it. Thank you, Miss Boone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, everyone. It's wonderful to stand before you again this evening as we begin a new school year and another year of monthly recognitions for our students and staff. I also want to say welcome back to our friends at Concord Printing, who again this year are serving as our sponsor for the Impact Through Education Awards. Uh, we appreciate Mr. Palmer and his staff and their generosity to our school system, and we are um, very excited about having them back again as an, a community partner. So without any further ado, I am pleased to present to you the Impact Through Education Awards for September 2013. Tonight's honorees are from A.T. Allen Elementary School and Hickory Ridge Middle School. We're going to begin with A.T. Allen Elementary, and I'd like to invite any members of A.T. Allen's administrative team to please come forward. Our first honoree from A.T. Allen this evening is Jasmine Topher. Would Jasmine and her family please come forward? <laughs> J. 
Jasmine is a fifth grader at A.T. Allen Elementary School, and she's the daughter of George and Michelle Topher. She's also big sister to brother Landon. She was born in West Palm Beach, Florida, and at the age of two, moved with her family to be closer to her grandmother and cousins in Cabarrus County. Jasmine has always been a bit precocious. It probably began early, when, early on when she would correct people who remarked on her red hair by stating, it's not red, it's pink. <laughs> Jasmine is a natural leader, she is responsible, and she has always been a serious student. Since the first day of kindergarten, she has used her own alarm clock to get up. She's always selected her own clothes, dressed herself, and kept her school materials organized and ready for the school day. Jasmine is a doer who learned to read at an early age. She's continued to excel in school in both reading and math. She's a well-rounded kid who loves playing on the Xbox with her brother and watching movies. She loves mermaids and even has a mermaid tail to wear in the swimming pool. She's also dependable and very helpful around the house. It's also important to note that Jasmine is a budding businesswoman. She organized her own successful pet business this past summer. She made and distributed flyers offering to walk and bathe dogs. Her mom reported that Jasmine not only created the services, she decided on the cost of the services, she designed and delivered the advertising, and then expertly delivered those services. All this before she was in fifth grade. Her parents credit the wonderful teachers Jasmine has had at A.T. Allen for her success as a student. One of Jasmine's teachers described her as a delight to have in the classroom. She is interesting and interested. Jasmine is a delightful student, and we are proud to recognize her positive impact on the students and staff at A.T. Allen Elementary. She's truly deserving of this recognition. Congratulations, Jasmine. You are an Impact Through Education Award winner for A.T. Allen Elementary School. Our next A.T. Allen honoree is Dylan Morgan. Would Dylan and his family please come forward? Dylan is also a fifth grader at A.T. Allen Elementary School, and he is the son of Amber and Jimmy Morgan. He's a big brother to Jacob and Emma. Dylan was born in Cabarrus County, but he has dreams in life that will take him far beyond Concord. His dream is to become a Navy SEAL. When asked why, he said, because I want to help my country. I know it will take a lot to become a SEAL, but I'm willing to work for it. I want to be the best that I can be. One of Dylan's teachers described him as a student who is kind to everyone and accepting of everyone. He's just a sweet kid. Another teacher said, Dylan is hardworking and always willing to meet a new challenge. Dylan describes himself as funny, smart, tough, but in a good way, respectful of others, a role model to his brother and sister, and a person who loves to read. His mom said that some of her earliest memories of Dylan reading are of Dylan reading everything. He would read the newspaper to her, the menu at the restaurant, even the magazines in the doctor's office. Dylan says that reading takes me to places I've never been. It's fun. He loves school and he loves A.T. Allen. He also loves backyard football, video games, creating his own games, his church, country music, and 77 Cutlass Oldsmobiles. <laughs> Both mom and dad agree that Dylan is smart, helpful, 
loyal, and willing to stand up for what he believes. His dad said he always tries to find a win-win situation for everyone. Dylan is a wonderful student at A.T. Allen, and we are proud to recognize his positive impact on the students and the staff at the school. Congratulations, Dylan. You are an Impact Through Education Award winner for A.T. Allen Elementary School. Our next honoree is Mrs. Amy Witten. Would Mrs. Witten and her family please come forward? <coughs> Amy Witten teaches fourth grade at A.T. Allen Elementary School. She grew up in Washington Township, New Jersey, and credits her third grade teacher, Mrs. Lawler, as a guiding influence in her becoming a teacher. When Mrs. Witten began to search for a school system to call home, Cabarrus County won her heart and eventually her purse strings as she and her husband Rex moved from Mecklenburg County to buy their first home here in Cabarrus County. Mrs. Witten enjoys spending time with family and friends. She also loves reading and continuing to learn. She stated that the constant desire to learn is one of the many reasons she loves teaching. This past summer was no exception. Mrs. Witten shared her skills and her commitment to students and colleagues by serving on the district level UBD team, curriculum writing team that is. She also used her summer off time to learn more about problem-based learning. Mrs. Witten has always been open to sharing her knowledge and classroom experiences with her colleagues, both at A.T. Allen and throughout Cabarrus County. Visitors to Mrs. Witten's classroom see teaching magic. When asked about Mrs. Witten, one colleague described her as an incredible teacher. She puts her students first. She cares. Another said, Mrs. Witten has a passion for teaching that is so obvious when you walk in her classroom. There is an excited chatter as students attempt to solve challenging problems while Mrs. Witten coaches them. Mrs. Witten says, I believe in creating an environment in which my children learn the value of teamwork and partnerships, where they can collaborate with other learners. I want my kids to work in a place where they feel comfortable making mistakes and taking risks. It's from our mistakes that we do the most learning. Mrs. Witten represents all teachers who are passionate and committed to the next generation of leaders. She is well deserving of this recognition for her impact on education. Thank you, Mrs. Witten, and congratulations. And our final honoree from A.T. Allen Elementary School this evening is Mrs. Claire Ferris. Would Mrs. Ferris and her family please come forward? Claire Ferris serves as, the, serves as the secretary and receptionist at A.T. Allen Elementary School. Hers is usually the first face and the first voice you hear at A.T. Allen. 
Her smile, her warm, helpful manner, and her lovely British accent tend to set everyone at ease. As one staff member remarked, Claire handles all tasks with grace and professionalism. Another said she's always smiling, she's kind, and consistently has a positive attitude. Mrs. Ferris is originally from Friston, England, where she met her future husband, Jimmy, who not only asked her to marry him, but also asked her to move to the States with him. They have a daughter, Chloe, who is an outstanding 10th grade student at Central Cabarrus High School. Mrs. Ferris attended Suffolk College in Ipswich, England, and has made good use of her education as an employee of Cabarrus County Schools for the past five years. She began as a volunteer at A.T. Allen. Even then, she impressed everyone with her strong work ethic, her pleasant manner, her organizational skills, and her ability to get along with everyone. In her spare time, Mrs. Ferris enjoys gardening and tennis. When asked what she likes most about her job, she stated, I like being the welcoming committee for A.T. Allen. I'm the first face they see. I enjoy meeting and helping students, parents, and staff. Claire is noted for her strong English resolve. She is able to stay calm and positive no matter what the task or the event. Under the most stressful times, Mrs. Ferris can be heard reassuring everyone with the comment, It's all good. It's all good. And with that marvelous accent, everyone tends to believe her. Mrs. Ferris goes the extra mile every day to make the school a better place for students, parents, and staff. She is an asset to A.T. Allen Elementary and to Cabarrus County Schools. Her selection as an Impact Through Education Award recipient is well deserved. Thank you, Mrs. Ferris, and congratulations. Next up, we will recognize students and staff at Hickory Ridge Middle School. I'd like to invite any members of the Hickory Ridge Middle School administrative team to come forward at this time. Just by, just by yourself tonight? <laughs> Our first honoree from Hickory Ridge Middle is Jordan Cruz. Would Jordan and her family please come forward? Jordan is a member of the basketball and volleyball teams and an advanced flutist in both the 8th grade band and the Hickory Ridge High School marching band. She is a sweet-spirited, helpful young lady. She always brings a positive attitude to the classroom by helping her teachers and providing a listening ear or a supportive shoulder for her peers. She also befriends all types of students and listens well, leads when she needs to, and is very coachable. She looks for ways she can be of service and is an all-around joy to have in the classroom. Her kind nature and focused work ethic make her a wonderful and successful student. Mature for her age, she communicates well with all and is always seen around school smiling and happy. She is sure to go on to great things due to her zest for life, deep-rooted desire to learn, and the discipline to make her goals a reality. Congratulations, Jordan. You are an Impact Through Education Award winner for Hickory Ridge Middle School. Our next Hickory Ridge Middle honoree is Dylan Ratliff. Would Dylan and his family please come forward? <clears throat>
Dylan is a leader in the classroom and on the football field. He constantly encourages other athletes to give their best. He leads by example and is always first in line. His attitude is infectious. He is every coach or teacher's dream. Dylan also has a great sense of humor and always has a smile for everyone. He's not only a leader on the field, but also in the classroom. On many occasions, Dylan has gone out of his way to ensure that students on the outside of a social situation are included. He's very mature and could be called wise beyond his years. He is a diligent and respectful young man who is working toward a very successful academic and professional future. Congratulations, Dylan. You are an Impact Through Education Award winner for Hickory Ridge Middle School. Our next honoree is Ms. Katie Sparks. Would Ms. Sparks and her family please come forward? <laughs> Katie Sparks is the media coordinator at Hickory Ridge Middle School. She is described as totally approachable and pleasant. Every time a teacher calls on her, she has a complete answer. She's also described as a light in any room. She's always willing to help and is typically the first to offer. Ms. Sparks is a team player who is consistently making efforts to improve the quality of the education the students receive, provides the resources that are pertinent to teaching, and embodies the school motto, Mavericks Take Care of Mavericks. Thank you, Ms. Sparks, for taking such great care. This Impact Through Education Award is well deserved. Congratulations. And our final honoree this evening from Hickory Ridge Middle School is Ms. Anna Parnell. Would Ms. Parnell and her family please come forward? <laughs> Anna Parnell is the school registrar and is stationed in the front office. She always has a smile and does her job with integrity and pride. Ms. Parnell is always positive, even when dealing with difficult situations, and makes a great first impression when visitors walk through the school's doors by treating them with courtesy and kindness. She's always willing to help others and has a wonderful rapport with staff and students. She's a multitasker who can juggle 15 balls in the air, all while keeping a phone to her ear and a smile on her face. Ms. Parnell, thanks for all that you do for Hickory Ridge Middle School. You certainly are deserving of this Impact Through Education Award. Congratulations. always enjoy doing the impact through education awards uh, the students once again congratulations and the staff 
all those that received awards, congratulations to you. It's, it's always good when your peers think that much of you to recognize you. And uh, so once again, congratulations. The next uh, order of our business here tonight is um, the Hilblish Ford Teacher of the Month Award. And we've got Mr. Tim Vaughn. He's the manager of Hilblish Ford. And we've got Dr. Shepard and also Miss Kathy Auger here tonight to make this presentation. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Tonight we begin our third year of recognizing a Hilbish Ford Teacher of the Month for Cabarrus County Schools. Thanks to Hilbish Ford's generosity, we've been able to honor 23 outstanding teachers from across our district. As we kick off the third year of this wonderful partnership, we offer our sincere thanks and gratitude to you, Mr. Vaughn, and to Hilbish Ford for making this possible. The 24th Cabarrus County Schools Hilbish Ford Teacher of the Month is Ashley Hamby. Ms. Hamby, would you, your family, and any members of your school's administrative team please come forward. Ashley Hamby is a third grade teacher at W.M. Irvin Elementary School. She was nominated for this award by a parent who wrote, Ashley Hamby is an exceptional teacher. She constantly encourages the best in each of her students. My son, who has attention deficit disorder and takes daily medication to help him focus, is an amazing student. Due to side effects from the medication, his doctor decided to take him off the medication. Most children with my son's condition would probably have started to fall behind as the distractions took over. Ms. Hamby never let this happen to my son. She continued to encourage him and keep him focused every day. She was always in contact with me, letting me know what he may need a little more help with. She continued, we were very excited to know that Ms. Hamby would be moving with him to third grade. As a mother, it's very important to know that your child is in the hands of such a compassionate and caring person every day. I know that in Ms. Hamby's care, he will not be an unruly, disobedient child in the back of the class. She will not allow her children to fail. As Plato said, the direction in which education starts a man will determine his future life. I know my child will do great things in his lifetime because Ms. Hamby cared. And Ms. Hamby, on behalf of Cabarrus County Schools, thank you for all that you do to ensure a bright future for your students. And now Mr. Vaughn and Dr. Shepard will present you with your award. Thank you. We appreciate Hilbish Ford for doing that. This is going on the third year as uh, the announcement was made, and uh, you can tell they really enjoy doing this too. You know, and, and to bring in the extra supplies—that's wow, that's over and above. Thank you, Tim. Thank, you, buddy. Yeah. Okay. The next item here uh, is our 4.3, the Energy Star Awards, and we have Mr. Cliff Moyer to come to the podium for that. Dave, are you going to help him since Lynn's out? Okay. Uh, good afternoon. I'm here tonight 
to present the Energy Star Award to three schools. But before I call the recipients forward, I'd just like to touch briefly on what it means to win this award. The Energy Star Award is part of the Washington, D.C.'s Environmental Protection Agency program, which is used to recognize occupancy or occupants of a building that have lowered their energy consumption. When a building becomes Energy Star certified, it means that the building has lowered its energy usage to a point where, when compared to similar buildings through the nation, it ranks in the top 25%. An Energy Star qualified building will use 35% less energy and generate 35% fewer greenhouse gases. Now to qualify for this award is kind of a two-stage process. And uh, to qualify for this Energy Star award, a building or school energy usage must be lowered to provide a score of at least 75 or higher out of a possible 100 points on the Energy Star qualification test. Next, the school must pass an Energy Star engineer's checklist. Now, this engineer will check for lighting, uh, temperature, humidity, and, of course, the quality of air in the building. Tonight's winners of the Energy Star Award come from J.N. Freeze Middle School, Patriot Elementary, and Weddington Hills. Would the recipients please come forward uh, from J.N. Freeze, Principal Dr. Keisha Cole, and Assistant Principal Fa Fatima Fulmore, from Patriot Elementary, Principal Mr. Philip Hall, and from Weddington Hills Elementary, Principal Ms. Janet Smith. Please come forward. While Dave's handing these out, I'll just summarize uh, what these schools have done to, for the district. As mentioned earlier, the EPA Energy Star program requires that a building score 75 or higher in the qualification test. Weddington Hills scored an 88 on this test. <laughs> J.N. Free scored an 89. And Patriot Elementary scored a 93 out of possible 100 points. When you compare this year, or this last year, 2012 and 2013, the combined, the combined energy saved by these three schools, when compared to their baseline, is 640,000 kilowatt hours. Now, you want to put this into perspective where we can all relate to it. This is enough electrical energy to power one elementary school for one year, or if you're an environmental person, you would want to think of this. This is the amount of electricity that will keep 451 metric tons of CO2, CO2 out of the atmosphere. And last, uh, probably the easiest thing to relate this to, this amount of electrical energy will provide the district an estimated cost avoidance of around $57,000. Thank you guys and congratulations. Okay, board members, we'll move on now. That's all the recognitions that we have for tonight. Our next order of business is the approval of the minutes. The minutes for uh, August the 5th, 2013 work session, the minutes from August the 12th, 2013 uh, business meeting. Uh, we've all had time to look at those and review them. Uh, do I have any corrections or any changes to be, need to be noted? Do I have a motion that the minutes be approved as presented? I would make a motion that those minutes be approved as Sorry. written. Okay, Mr. Kiger seconds it. Ms. Carpenter makes the motion. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved as presented. Our next part on the agenda is we have two reports, one from the board chair and also one from the superintendent. I don't have a lot to say tonight. In other words, uh, other, in other words I would like to say this, though. Um, 
as some of you that were with us last week when we did the work session, we were talking about the potential bond referendum coming up in November of uh, 2014. We've got quite a bit of work we've got to try to get done. It's going to take some funding. And uh, I just wanted to express my appreciation for Jason Osterreit, our commissioner, who sat in last week at the work session. And matter of fact, I think he's toured a few schools. He's shown a lot of interest in helping us get this bond referendum off the ground. And uh, But anyway, uh, there's a lot of work got to be done. It's going to take funding. And so I appreciate Jason for taking time out of his day to sit with us through our lengthy meeting last week to learn about what our needs are. All right, with that being said, I'd like to ask Dr. Shepard if he has his comments ready, and then we'll move on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I'd like to begin by asking or welcoming our students and staff and families back to school. Day 15 of school, but this is our first official chance to welcome everyone back. I know we started strong, and I believe this is going to be an incredible year for Cabarrus County Schools. I also want to extend my sincere thanks to many community partners, and you've seen the example tonight that have donated supplies and money to purchase items to ensure that our students in need have the items they need to begin the school year. We've received donations from the following companies and organizations I'd like to give recognition to tonight. Uh, Corning, Hendrick Toyota, Scion, Time Warner Cable, Zenmonix, K104.7, Concord Mills, Walmart, Kmart, Communities and Schools of Cabarrus County, and as you saw tonight, Hilbush Ford. I'd also like to offer my congratulations to Emily Riley, Cabarrus County Special Olympics Coordinator, who has been named the 2013 Special Olympics North Carolina Coordinator of the Year. Emily was selected for her leadership of the local Special Olympics effort here in Cabarrus County. We congratulate her on this re recognition and we'll certainly invite her to an upcoming board meeting so that we can congratulate her personally. I'd like to remind our viewing audience about our new virtual opportunity for students in our county who are homeschooled. HomeReach is a new program that will allow our homeschool students to enroll in Cabarrus County Schools to take a variety of advanced level classes in foreign language, math, and science. You can find more information about HomeReach on our district website. And speaking of our district website, I'd like to remind everyone that we have a new design at the district and school level. Our new site launched over the summer, and we know that many people are just beginning to familiarize themselves with the new look. And I encourage you to take some time to navigate through the site. Now, one of the features of the new design is that it allows for standardization of some items. So it should be easier to find the same information as you look at different school sites. Another neat feature is that the new uh, design is viewable on a variety of devices, desktops and laptop computers, smartphones and tablets, any of those devices will give you a clear vision of our website. I'd also like uh, to announce that this week we will launch a new digital magazine that offers a fresh look at the successes of our students, teachers, administrators, and staff through interactive storytelling. To complement the digital magazine, we will also begin a billboard advertising campaign that promotes our school system. The first billboard will de debut this week and will be located on Highway 29. And as a surprise preview of uh, what's ahead for us, I'd like to uh, ask Mike Martin and Ronnie Boone to uh, show for us tonight uh, a four-minute video that uh, is part of this campaign that's been put together. So Ronnie and Mike, if you guys want to turn on your TVs there, we'll take a look at this. responsibility 
to meet the needs of every family within our community. And we have a long-standing tradition of being responsive to the children in the community, making sure that regardless of what background they come from, we're here to help them. I can honestly say there is not a school in this district that I wouldn't feel comfortable having my children attend. And not everybody can say that in a district, but the way that my children were prepared socially and academically, I see that in every school that I go to visit. And I see the dedication of the educators, I see the, the, the push for individualization that is taking place um, to get to know the student as well as the community. For me, I actually came from a very large school district to be here because I thought that the other district that I was in was very top-heavy. Um, you know, a lot of administration, and this is more like the emphasis is on the teachers and um, the students. And what that means for me is the teachers can teach in their classroom and really emphasize what's in their curriculum and fully develop and, and teach the children in depth. Second grade is my passion. I've been in second grade for my entire teaching career. I love the fact that when they come to me, they are so hungry for knowledge. They are excited about learning. Uh, they want to please me. They want to please their parents. Uh, and that's what's kept me in the classroom. I've had lots of opportunities to come out of the classroom, but seeing those little faces at seven years old come in in the morning excited to learn and hear at the end of the day, is it already time to go home, Miss Farber? Um, it's priceless. And I think that my experience in high school has prepared me for my next step into college uh, greatly um, at the Cabarrus County level and at Jim Robinson's level because the teachers truly want to see you succeed. I know numerous teachers have set, set time of their personal time aside after school to come and help you out with whatever you need and that has really helped me out um, with my experience. I was in Cabarrus County Schools my whole life beginning in kindergarten and all the way up until I graduated from Concord High School in 2008. Um, I think being in the same school system my entire life was really beneficial for me. It helped me build friendships and um, build relationships with, with teachers that lasted a lifetime and allowed me to really find friends and teachers who I knew would be there for me in the long run. So, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, that is just a taste of what you're in for over the next few months, and we're very proud of that work, and I'd like to give recognition to Ronnie Boone and our public relations department. Once again, congratulations, Ms. Boone. That's an excellent job on this, and for everyone that was involved, thank you so very much. It just makes me so proud to be a part of Cabarrus County Schools, and there's no doubt it is the clear choice. Okay. Uh, Yes, you may, Ms. Carpenter. Um, Dr. Shepard brought up one point I was wanting to make, and, and uh, uh, he'll be sh they bought in supplies today, and that is something that we are desperately needing. And I know that uh, community schools had kind of put a challenge forth to our board, and I know some of our board members, I know myself, and I know another board member had actually gave our paycheck last month uh, to, for supplies for communities in school. And uh, I just want to put a plea out to our community that if you can give supplies to our school students that they're really in need. And I know communities in school have on their website the supplies that are needed, but if any other businesses would like to donate, the, the teachers really need it and the children really need it. So uh, please, uh, if you can donate supplies, that is something our supply budget was cut by 25% this coming year. So anyone that can donate, we really would appreciate it. And uh, that that is something that really is needed. And we, again, would like to thank all the businesses that did donate. And again, go on the website. You can look. If you're going by your school, please pick up a pack of paper. Take it to them. I'm sure they can use it. And thank you so much.
Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. The next item on our agenda is our guest speaker section. We have three speakers lined up to speak tonight. And uh, I'd like to switch it around a little bit and, and do the ladies first. And so, Miss Angela Beaver, if you would want to come onto the podium, and uh, we'll hear from you first, and then we'll hear from the other gentleman. I believe you got Daniel Hams with you also. Is he going to speak tonight? Okay. And you're, you're speaking on behalf as an individual, so you've got three minutes, I believe. Is that right? All right. Thank you for being here. If you will, turn your mic on, Ms. Beaver. Just push the little button down there, yeah. and it lights up. You're good, you're good to go. Is that good? Yep. Okay, okay. Uh, I gave to Dr. Shepard before the meeting a color page of pictures of what I'm going to speak to you about tonight. Um, hello, my name is Angela Beaver. I'm a mother of four boys at Boger Elementary School, Northwest Middle, and Northwest High School, and we are here tonight to speak to you about three things. To emphasize to you the critical need for work at the Northwest Community Track. Number two, to detail for you the direct impact that the track plays in the healthful living of Northwest Middle and High School students and an assortment of other community members that use the facility. And finally, to announce to you the funding that a dedicated group of parent volunteers and staff have secured and plan to secure. By talking to you about these three things, Mr. Helms and I hope to guarantee your support as you prioritize and plan for the use of funds, primarily the remaining QSCB funds that must be used in 2014 that Mr. Whitkey mentioned to our team in an August 16th email as we sought support for our grant writing work. Like the group from Central that spoke to you all last week, Northwest was built in the 1960s and its track is in dire need of repairs as the pictures that I gave you show. As the board, the, the dire need for work on the Northwest track was confirmed when you budgeted funds years ago for the project that have since been pulled due to the funding crisis and safety code issues at our old and well-loved school. Northwest is unique from all other schools in the county, however, in that the middle school and our high school share a large chunk of our facilities for curriculum and sports teams, like the Northwest Community Track. There are many positives to sharing a campus, but one of the negatives is the much higher wear on shared facilities. We must maintain these facilities. We have not done that. In a letter of support from Dr. Kevin Burroughs, a well-known and respected sports medicine doctor in the area, he says, and I quote, seen a multitude of overuse injuries. When it comes to spring track and field season, it has always been intriguing to me, to him, that Northwest High is one of the two schools that I see the most stress injuries um, slash fractures from. After seeing the track surface, it is no surprise, end quote. In addition to the estimated 2,000 students, 1123 at the high school, 925 at the middle school, using the track for PE classes, health classes, sports teams of all kinds training, two track teams, a cross country team, running and walk clubs, breast cancer awareness walks for both schools, Northwest track is also accessible for use by our community, where other schools in the county, the track cannot be entered. Almost every morning, neighbors can be seen strolling or jogging there. Six times a year, RCCC law enforcement classes use our track for timed one-and-a-half-mile runs. Police and Cabarrus sheriffs use our track for annual agency 300-meter timed runs. 110 ROTC cadets use our track for presidential physical fitness tests, including a one-mile timed and shuttle run just to mention a few of our community users. As you can easily see, there is a critical need for improvement, major improvements for the Northwest Community Track, and there are a large number of students and community members directly impacted by this track on a daily basis. We would like, we would like to announce to you that working with our team of parents and staff our grant team has secured an estimated $25,800 through the Cabarrus County Parks Matching Incentive Grant for the Northwest Community Track Project. Even more exciting, last week we learned that our grant team is an unofficial finalist with a site visit to the track on September 25th by a team from the Jimmy Johnson Foundation. If successful, this $99,500 Champions Grant will enable the repair and rubberizing of the track surface itself. 
Combined with Cabarrus Park's awarded funds and possible QSCB funds, basic fencing, basic bleachers, basic parking improvements, and basic restroom repairs are possible. Without utilizing remaining QSCB funds, however, the project as a whole may not be possible. There's a critical need for a Northwest track project. There are over 2,000 students and a multitude of community members directly impacted by this track. Our team has worked tirelessly to provide funding to CCS and to the school board to make this project possible and, with and timely with QSCB funding. Please consider our plight and our plea and support our hard work as you prioritize how to use the rest of these QSCB funds and other funds. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beaver. Mr. Hams, did you have something? Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Uh, my name is Daniel Helms. I'm a uh, teacher and head track coach at Northwest Cabarrus. And I'm here tonight to speak to you on behalf of uh, the track project from a coach's perspective. Uh, as Ms. Beaver just informed you, we have done a lot of work in securing funding towards a new track or, or a resurfaced track. Um, and we're excited to uh, have the site visit from the Jimmy Johnson Foundation uh, in just a couple of weeks. Um, as she said, the remaining funds from the uh, QSCB funding would help us to uh, complete this project. Um, if you notice on that uh, sheet of pictures that she gave to you, the top left corner, this is our shed down at the track. You can see the amount of success we've had over the years uh, at Northwest. However, in my, my eight years at Northwest, we have never hosted a track meet. Um, schools do not come to our facilities because there's rubber tracks elsewhere, um, and with the rest of our facilities, with our bathrooms, with our lack of concession stands, lack of seating, nobody wants to come to Northwest. Um, so I'm here tonight to tell you a few ways that this project will benefit our teams, our school, and our community. Um, first of all, uh, with transportation costs. Uh, we have to travel to all of our meets, 8 to 10 uh, for the high school season, about 7 to 8 for the middle school season. Um, the more meets that we would be able to host at our facility means transportation costs would go down because we would not have to take two buses for the high school and one bus for the middle school to other uh, schools for meets. Secondly, it would increase revenue. Um, with hosting meets, we can sell spectators tickets, we can sell concessions. We would like to host Saturday invitationals, which would bring those revenues as well as entry fees from the schools participating. And we would also love to bring uh, the regional track championships to Northwest, uh, which could be a, a big source of revenue as well. Um, number three would be injury prevention. As Ms. Beaver just informed you, uh, we see a lot of stress-related injuries, uh, and that's just from the athletes and the students themselves. Uh, there's countless other uh, community members that utilize our track, um, and having a rubberized resurfaced track will cut down on a lot of these stress-related injuries uh, that we see uh, now. Uh, number four is accessibility. Um, currently, um, we have no uh, or very limited in our handicap accessibility. We do have a uh, paved road that runs down to the track. However, uh, cracks and broken uh, pavement getting onto the track makes it difficult for wheelchair and other handicap uh, um, accessibility. Um, in addition to our bathroom facilities, which has a, a ledge that people would have to, uh, to come up over uh, in order to access those facilities. By completing this project, we will address all of those handicap accessibility issues. Uh, and lastly is just pride. I know that everyone in this room takes pride in what we offer um, with our, our teachers, our students, our facilities. Um, the Northwest Track is one of the few that is open to the community. People come on here, hundreds of people a year, thousands of people a year come on the facility to use it. Um, and in its current shape, it's not something we're fully proud of. We'd like to make it, make it to that level where we are proud of this facility. Uh, the parents and teachers and administration at both the middle and the high school have worked very hard in this grant writing process, and we hope to bring you good news of other grants that have come in. Um, we ask that you, uh, for your support through the Q, uh, excuse me, QSCB grants, to make this vi vision a reality for us. Thank you for your time and your consideration this evening. Thank you, Mr. Hams. And once again, thank you, Ms. Beaver, for being here. Our next uh, speakers, we have Mr. Andy Jones, and he's going to be 
coming here, and he's going to speak on behalf of a group of concerned parents for J.M. Robinson. And so, Mr. Jones, when you get ready, uh, you have five minutes, and when you start, she'll start the timer. Yeah, Mr. Shu, um, Mr. Steinbacher's going to be joining me, okay, so we so don't need do, two do segments. Them together. Yes, sir. Okay, that'll be fine. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Andy Jones, and this is Steve Steinbacher. We're parents and boosters at J.M. Robinson High School. Steve is also a volunteer football coach and has been the last five seasons. We're both very active with the football program, and I'm also involved with our wrestling program, and I helped start our lacrosse program several years ago. Between our two families, we have three graduates from Robinson and an additional three that will graduate over the next several years. All of our children are athletes and do well in the classroom. We'd like to speak to you tonight regarding our fundraising journey to build an athletic field house. We understand the status of the project is on the agenda for later in the evening. Simply put, it's been our goal to provide an adequate locker room and field house facility to support Robinson Athletics, boys and girls outdoor sports. The sports that utilize the stadium currently have to share space with the regular physical education classes. Athletes must dress at home or before games once they arrive. Um, many sports actually change in the parking lot, not necessarily the football team, but other sports. Our current space is not large enough to accommodate the demands of the regular school day along with sports teams. And as winter sports start up, there's definitely overlap and concerns in the locker room area. We are, we've also maintained an emphasis on health and well-being of our athletes and coaches. It's very important to keep a clean, germ-free dressing, dressing room and storage environment. You may have heard of certain health issues that we've raised over the years in regards to this. Our original school plans did have a freestanding um, uh, field house in the plans. However, that was cut, I think, as everyone here knows. We're also advocates for building similar structures, similar structures at other newer schools. In fact, our current design was created with that in mind. Our original blueprints have been modified uh, to be more conducive to replicate in the event that that's requested over time for these other schools. The layout of our campus do not, does not allow teams to venture back to the main school building or locker room during games. In fact, in most cases, the visiting team does not use the school building at all. Therefore, there's no restroom facilities available directly during or after the games. We also do not have any shelter during rainstorms or other extreme weather. Teams often huddle behind fences during halftime shows for privacy and team pep, pep talks. We want to emphasize to the board tonight that our fundraising efforts are not new. Parents actually began raising funds shortly after the school opened in 2001 or 2002. I personally got more involved when we first approached the board in 2009 at a planning meeting. Other than Dr. Shepard, many of you were not serving at that point in time. We made a formal presentation to the board, and of course the board and Dr. Shepard were very eager to assist us in any way possible. Let me, let me share, though, there's no playbook in place for parents necessarily wanting to raise private funds for schools. It's certainly been an adventure. Rules change and commitments and support may fade or be forgotten as time goes by. Priorities do change. Over time, we formally heard or interpreted such, or, or interpreted such messages from officials as, let us know how we can help you. Good luck. Or, we'll try to match your dollars over time if you can raise half the funds necessary or we really don't have any funds at this time. There's other priorities. The financial crisis has hit us hard. We recommend you pursue other funding sources, any viable source that may work. We're funded by the county. Perhaps you should try reaching someone at the county to help you fund your matters. Let me just emphasize that um, members of this group and other officials generally recommended us to reach out to other partners and we did reach out to the county over time and we're pleased that they were able to help us very much help us along the way we understand that these are challenging times for our schools and citizens we're very grateful to this board 
the county commissioners, and our other sources uh, that we're in the position that we're in. I did want to note that our fundraising to date has actually raised approximately $375,000. That may not be what some of your documentation um, states. The reason for that is we've had to expend certain expenditures over time to um, draw up blueprints and whatnot. So the actual figures that you see there, I believe, is close to what we have available today. Also tonight, we've raised an additional $5,600 of private funds that we want to offer up uh, for all the right reasons. So we continue our fundraising abilities. Once we did receive the funds from the county earlier this year, we kicked off a formal planning meeting in January. We've had great participation from the school systems facilities management team, our principal and staff, boosters, parents, and coaches. We also needed to reconsider our design and ensure it was up to code and it met um, everything that Title IX required, and we've done so. The school system, as you know, has put our project out for bid, and it's our understanding the contract has been awarded. Um, however, it's also our understanding that we're a little short on the necessary funds to begin our first phase. We understand Dave Burnett is here tonight to actually make a recommendation or two to look at an alternative, and we would appreciate you greatly taking what he has to say into consideration. It is our hope, um, as we close, that we're able to push this project over the goal line to be able to break ground in the very near future. We'd like to recognize Mr. Lynn Wickey and his staff on their efforts and assistance these past nine months. We're extremely grateful to them and our principal, Greg Hall. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Jones sure. and Mr. Steinbacker for being here. We appreciate you coming and sharing your views and your concerns with us. Thank you. Okay. Are you going to hang around for the, the part on Jay Robinson? I think I will. Thank you okay. very much. We, I would invite you to stay around, okay? M Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just point something out briefly that the, one of the proud graduates in the video was uh, Mr. Jones's son, Hamilton, who, who got an appointment to the Naval Academy and is currently a student at the Naval Academy. So I thought that was pretty exciting. You were in the audience when they showed the video. And I didn't know <laughs> so just another success story from uh, Cabarrus County Schools. Thank you, Mr. Kiger. Our next order of business is the approval of the consent agenda. Board members, if you recall, these are the items that we discussed in our work session last week. Do I have a motion that the uh, consent agenda be approved as it is presented? So moved. Mr. Harrison makes the motion. Second. Mr. Kiger seconds the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Okay, now we'll move into our action items, and these are the items that we'll be voting on tonight. We've already discussed some of these. Well, we've actually we've discussed all of these last week in our work session, and so the first one here is uh, Miss Kelly Klutz will come to the podium, and this will be the adoption of the 2013-14 budget. And so, Miss Klutz, you're when you get there, you are. We're ready. Good afternoon. Um, the questions that we had as related to the budget last week um, were uh, Mr. Walter had asked to see the function level on the, the budget resolution. As you can see on this document, we've provided that. Um, and then Mr. Phillips asked for some um, data and a graph, and I updated that from some previous board meetings um, and budget uh, committee meetings that we had. So I'll um, take any other questions or concerns you have at this time. Thank you, Ms. Klutz. Board members, do you have any further questions that Ms. Klutz needs to address at this time before we vote on this 2013-2014 budget adoption? Are we going to have comments or can I well, now, well, if you want to make some comments, that's fine. If you want to have some questions, that's fine. Ms. Klutz, yeah, here. She's here to help you anyway. So you can go ahead. We'll start with you. Okay. Well, basically, mine's going to be suggestions, comments. Is, is basically because, first of all, I would like to say that I respect each member of this board and what their comments are. I respect our legislators and everybody saying, well, the state did this or the commissioners did this, and, and needless to say, I'm not happy with where we're at. Um, uh, basically, we, we had to basically uh, eliminate uh, 120 positions are well where when we basically boil down to we we come up with roughly around uh, 100 or 
what was the final total of our uh, TAs that we actually cut? Was it a what was it? Uh, 120 TAs, is that correct? That we ended up having to cut from our budget, is that correct? I believe the, it was 142. We restored 22, which would take you uh, back to 120. 120 TA positions. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, I'm not real happy with that. Um, there's a quote that I would like to say. Somebody says, "Well, if you, what's your solution to that? What could we do?" You know, I hate to say, "Well, I don't like that." What would be a solution to that? Well, a couple of weeks ago, there was a gentleman, Mr. Wilson King from Kannapolis, made a suggestion in the paper, and I thought it was an excellent suggestion. One of the and, and I want to kind of read a quote that he put in the paper. He's talking about, well, with the, he said, that since the school system and the state were unable to fund additional positions, I would suggest that now is the time for parents and grandparents to volunteer to spend time at the schools to help teachers in any way they can. A couple hours a day or a couple hours a week would be appreciated by the teachers, the students, and the school system. In addition to the rewards for volunteering are many and ongoing, I can attest to this since I've been a volunteer for the last five years in an elementary school. People talk about taking mission trips to other countries to make, make them a better place. Why not consider a mission trip to a local school to help your child, your grandchild, or a child of a neighbor become a better student? School is about to start, which it already has. Please think about spending some of your free time to volunteer at any elementary school. It can be rewarding with the smiles of a child who would appreciate your efforts. You can make a difference in the life of a child. There is one solution, to volunteer. Another solution would be for our vice principal. Some of them are already doing to take the hours, we're already paying those, those assistant principals in those elementary schools to go into the classroom to take up some of this slack. Like I say, some of them are already doing, I know it's already being done at Weinkauf, but we don't require those vice principals to go into the classroom to help these, these TAs. This is another instance where this is something that could be done to help take up this slack. Uh, that us losing this, those, uh, those teacher assistants. But something has to be done because these teacher assistants are gone. This really upsets me and this is one of the things that bothers me about this current budget. Also, the reduction we had with the, the supplies, the 50% we lost on the school, the school things. But one thing that really does bother me I think more than anything else on this budget that we're seeing is where the 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 1,400 individuals that got no increase at all. We did get supplements. We got from the commissioners an increase of 1.5 percent on supplements, but not all our employees got anything. This bothers me tremendously. Um, you know the $200,000, I know you don't want to give that up. You're saying we may need that $200,000, which could be used for salaries. Um, I would like to see us take that $200,000 that we had that has not been allocated and possibly use that as a one-time uh, bonus for these individuals that got nothing, maybe to be given around uh, December one-time bonus to those individuals, uh, not not to be given to us, uh, the board. I would say us be exempt from that, but to split whatever that $200,000 be, you know, split one time, I, you know, that's what I would say one time to give them something um, one time uh, since they did not get, that way it's not a reoccurring expense uh, but to say, give them something for those individuals that got nothing at all. Um, and again, this is a suggestion. I'm just saying, I'm giving, instead of saying, I don't like this, I'm trying to give some type of thing to say. And I know some of the other people on this board, 
this is not an original idea. I think some of the other ones on this board maybe thought of something like this. But I just do not like this budget, and I can it it gives me. I, these are the things I don't like about it, and I just do not feel good about it, and I cannot agree with it, and that's what I'm stating. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Carpenter, and, and I think that if you would ask any, each of these board members individually, they would share your very same sentiments. But we've got to have a budget. I mean, we have to pass a budget. There's no doubt about that. And Ms. Klutz, you can elaborate if you'd like. Just for, um, I know we talked about this one time before already. I think you've talked to the board about this, but maybe you might can just reiterate that, um, you know, we have monies allocated by the state. And then if the ADM or, or our membership is not where they allocate, but they allocate for, for it, but it don't happen, guess what? They call that money back. They call it back. So if you would, you know, I, I mean, sure, there is a couple hundred thousand dollars. I think this was one-time money, one-time money just laying there that we haven't appropriated yet. But I think the comment that you made at one time, Ms. Klutz, was that it would be cutting this year's budget pretty slim for us to take that money and, and dispose of it, although a very wonderful idea, and it would be good intentions of the board, you know, as a a token of that we want to do more than what we're doing but we got a school system to run and we can't cut ourselves short you know and I, but anyway if you want to elaborate just for a minute or two Ms. Klutz I will briefly elaborate on a couple of comments um, Ms. Carpenter I know that you were a part of the budget committee for the last two years and I want to personally invite you back to the budget committee for next year so that you can find these solutions, give them to us in January so that we can make our mark on the budget when it's presented to you. Um, so we're in September now. It's kind of, it's pretty difficult to take these solutions and incorporate them into a budget once we pass that time frame. But again, I'm going to invite you to come and participate and so that we can hear your, all of your wonderful suggestions in January and February and March when we're really making um, stern decisions about the way that we're going to present this budget. I will also um, address the ADM concerns when the state um, allocates funds. They project our allotment, our, our student enrollment. They projected us at 30,699 students. We're currently hitting 30,000. So we are funded for, and I'm, when I say 30,000, I don't mean 30,000 exact. I mean close to 30,000, which means we're overfunded for about 700 students take that number and multiply it out by $4,500, $4,900 per pupil, we're significantly overfunded. $200,000 isn't going to touch that number. Okay, so we need to, when we do, we have a $250 million budget. $200,000 is not something that we can just allocate every time that we get it. We need to hold on to those dollars and see what our future, what lies in our future. Thank you, Ms. Klutz. And that's, you said it more eloquently than I did, but I appreciate Thank your you. comments. Board members, do we have any other questions or comments yes, on the uh, point of clarification? Just uh, overfunded. Explain that, meaning we're going to have to return money. Correct. Um, so the state gives us, when they give us $150 million that's, that's showing on our state allotment sheet, they plan to give you $150 million, that's based on the number of students that we have, 30, or they're projecting us, 30,699. The, they'll look at the ADM, the average daily membership, at the first month, and then they'll look at it the second month. Whichever number is larger, they will tell us, they will give us actual funding for that. So we'll get somewhere close to 30,000 students which is significantly different than what they planned and what they anticipated giving us. So I've built most of that in to knowing that I've got to return that back to the state, but all of that's part of the numbers that when I tell you that I don't think that you should allocate that $200,000, that's why. I don't, because we have some big expenses coming back to us. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a, a comment, and I, I assume the, the rest of the board is as well. And, and uh, Ms. Carpenter, I, I appreciate your passion, and, and 
it, it is difficult anytime we have to tell somebody, you know, the 120 TAs that, that, that you know, their positions are gone, and we uh, work to try to uh, address that the best we could. Um, but the one thing that, that stands out in my mind, when I took my seat in no, December of 2010 and proceeded, as everybody else here did, at various times go to School Board 101, and you meet board members from other districts, and to a, and, and, and Lynn, I believe you and I were there together, to a person that we met, we heard over and over and over how much better off our district was when we talked about where we were fund balance was, where we were in cuts, and what we were trying to manage. And I'm here to tell you, the same people that steered the boat then, Ms. Klutz and Dr. Shepard, are still steering the boat. So I, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. But I think you have led us down the path where we need to go. I think we need to, obviously, we need a budget tomorrow. Um, we've got to pass this budget. And again, if there's something that we need to do differently next year, then, then we'll talk about it. But where we are today, the leadership and guidance that you guys have given us, at least as far as I'm concerned, is greatly appreciated. And I think we are, uh, I think we're in good shape. Thank you, Mr. Kiger. Board members, do we have any other comments? Mr. Schumacher, you want to, since we're on this side, we might as well go into this side. Yeah, might as well finish up this, this end. First off, I, I want the public to understand that we are not wasting money in this school system. Our maintenance budgets have dramatically dropped, and when you look at the maintenance per square foot, and I've been working on some calculations, but our maintenance budget per square foot is below the level it was in 2003 without inflation. And, you know, we've had a, a fair amount of inflation since 2003. Our maintenance staff has been flat for the last five years. And this is not just one department. There's other departments that are exactly the same way. Our custodians and our, and our IT department are all working at very low rates. And, and that was in our budget to raise these people's pay. Ms. Carpenter is absolutely right. You know, this, we, we got this revenue and this is all we get. And we'll have to pass this budget because there's no other option. We can do a continuing re resolution if we defeat this, and then we'll come back in November and have to re be faced with this budget to pass again. So whether we vote for it or against it, we'll have to then follow up with some type of resolution to keep, keep operating, and then we'll be faced with the exact same amount of revenue from the state and from the local people. But we've been challenged, and I think that the people in this district are huge professionals. They're, every teacher... Every custodian, every maintenance person, every IT person are doing work below the minimum that we have or at, at the minimum for what we would, our salary study showed. We did ask the commissioners for more money, but they are looking at a much bigger picture than what we're looking at, and so they weren't able to grant us some of the increases that we asked for those particular positions. I would hope that next year they would find some way to bake a little bit more recurring dollars and in, create an expansion in our budget to cover some of these, these positions so we can get the raises. Not only that, we need more money to just do routine maintenance on our facilities. We're not getting that. We've, we've heard uh, last, week we, uh, last, yeah, last week we heard the central folks coming in here about issues they have. We've got roof replacements that we need. We've got the tracks that are falling apart. You know, there's, there's a lot of needs in this county, and they're not being covered, and, and it's a challenge for our whole community. This isn't just the commissioner's issue. We've got to come up with, with dollars, and we've got to convince the public that we're not wasting dollars, that this is not big government at work. This is, this is our community working together. We're at the lowest level. We're not the federal government. We're not the state government, but we are truly using the funding that we get, and we're using it well. And I just want the public to understand that it's not a waste thing going on here. People are very frugal, and they're very and investing a tremendous amount of themselves, their own money, into making this school system work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shoemaker. My sentiments exactly, because Barry, you know, you worked with us on the budget committee just like Ms. Carpenter did, and myself, and uh, you know, and you'll see just how frugal these folks are. I mean, they get down to the bone, scrape the bone. <laughs> Telling you. But, uh, you know, I agree with you, you know, and thank you for your comments. All right, over to my left now, we'll start with Mr. Phillips. Do you have any comments, questions about the uh, budget resolution? Well, I, I did. Uh, Ms. Klutz, do you have the ability to show those charts that you, you sent me? Okay, well, I'm just going to read off some of the numbers just for the benefit of the public. I had asked for her, because when I see 
244 million dollars is the total budget it's like wow that's a lot of money but i have a hard time really judging it relative to where we were last year and the year before and the year before so i wanted to see uh, the numbers on our funding on a per pupil basis going back to the start of the recession in uh, 2008 and the numbers that uh, Ms. Klutz provided are that we are down about $500 per student from the state. We were up at $5,250 per student in 2008. This year we're at 4781 That's uh, $471 less per student. And, and yes, there was a cut from last year to this year, despite what the governor thinks. Um, luckily, we got um, a small increase on the county side uh, this past year from uh, 1549 per student to 1580 per student. That's an increase of $31. But the state cut us by 471. So overall, we're looking at trying to educate our students with $440 less per child and we start multiplying that by 25 students in a class and it starts to be a fairly significant amount of money which is why we are making appeals for parents and others to to donate uh, materials and just as uh my my friend at the end was pointing out that we we are uh, underfunding our maintenance and because of that we have the, the glaring needs that, that we were presented with last week by the parents from uh, Central Cabarrus and what we're presented with this week. I have a bunch of photos that I took last weekend, this past weekend, of some of the older <coughs> elementary schools that I'll spare you with. Um, but let's just say that Saturday I spent part of my day trimming uh, hedges around a uh, library uh, that uh, is close to my heart because somebody that's close to my heart works there and that's because our school system does not have the money to just do the basic landscaping um, maintenance that we used to be able to do uh, before our budgets were cut by about 10 percent so as i said last week i'll vote for this but i will be holding my nose when i do it Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Uh, Mr. Harrison, you have any comments, questions? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Ms. Propes, um, it may be a dull word, but the highest compliment I can pay to you is that you are prudent with our resources. And I mean that from the depths of my heart. And it's a lesson, I hope, to the media, and it's a lesson, I hope, to parent and booster organizations who have been here one night or another or maybe listening to recordings of this, that if we have a budget of 244 or more million dollars, but we have some measure of discretion on $200,000, just do the math yourself and you can see how tight, tight, tight our budget is. And um, my colleagues, Mr. Shoemaker and Mr. Phillips, their analyses are spot on. Our budget is to the bone. There ain't no fat. We spend money incredibly wisely, I think, in the big picture, and I think we spend it very efficiently, and that there is not much wiggle room in this budget. You've seen budgets come and go in your number of years with us, and I suspect you could bend our ears and, and, um, with stories of better times compared to the times right now. Um, no, ain't nobody happy here with this budget, but it is what it is, and I will vote for it because it is the best we can do under these circumstances. And I appreciate your stewardship and your uh, wise guidance um, and in the context and the uh, advice and cons consultation you present to us uh, concerning these matters. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. Mr. Walter. Just I'm going to second what David had said. It looks like the best budget we can do under the circumstances. I mean, it's heartbreaking for me to hear the stories about teachers leaving to work in restaurants where they could be in the classroom because we, the state's not funding us for giving raises. Um, so 
My qu two questions here was go back to the, the ADM difference. How, how does the charter school play in that? Play in that? Did they, do they provide their ADM to us? Do we, is that money that's going to go over to them? Is that? It's a huge role um, in, in the projected ADMs. We were anticipating back in budget committee um, back in January, February, that the uh, charter schools would take about 600 of our students. Um, we do, I don't know the final numbers yet, but it appears that the charter schools have taken about 600 of our students. Um, so they were projected in our numbers, and then they'll, we'll, they'll come out of, the state will take them out of our numbers and they'll give them to the charter school. So we're still under, we did, there's still less students than we predicted there would be, is that? There's significantly less students than we, than Even we with projected. Even accounting for the charter school? Um, even, I would say yes. Um, we're only up um, almost 100 students, I think, at this point, if you remove what we believe the charter schools um, are taking position for. Okay, and then the second question was on Section 2, uh, fund balance. Can you talk to me about that and how, how that may be affected? Would that be affected by this as well? Um, our, our section, charter section, school. section 2 on the resolution. Section 2. The Section 2 on the fund balance, that's the allocation it's going to take to balance our books and make us whole for this year. So if our, whatever our fund balance is, it's going to take $3 million to, to balance that out. And a lot of that I put in there anticipating this charter school um, change. We also received $600,000 in local dollars for charter schools. But $600,000 will not do it, I promise you. It's going to take about at least double that. So I have allocated enough dollars so that we can survive the year. And with all of those factors, it'll take about $3 million to balance the budget out of our fund balance. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure that what we're, we're passing covers that. I, I'm comfortable that it is. Um, again, we're not... We're not going to have any fluff. We're not going to have a lot of room to make decisions throughout the year. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of times we'll have a need to um, add staff second semester because class sizes are growing and doing things as we, um, I don't see the, a significant need to add classes um, or teachers at second semester with our, the numbers that we have. Um, but I, I feel comfortable that I've, I've put in enough um, because all along we were thinking, 600 kids would go to students would go to the charter school Okay, that's all I have mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Walter. Dr. Shepard you wanted to comment on our budget I do and thank you. Mr. Chairman for giving me the opportunity uh, Just to clarify a few things um, as you're well aware Resources come to the school system from three different sources. That is our federal government our state government and our local government meaning our county commissioners um, if you were a member of the um, federal government, I would be encouraging you tonight to allocate more funds to our school system. Um, and if you were a member of the General Assembly, I'm very proud of the fact that our North Carolina General, General Assembly members um, in this area voted against the budget um, because I think in, in some cases they believe that schools should have been appropriated additional funds. If you were a member of the County Commission, then I would be encouraging you to allocate more monies to the school system. And I'm very thankful that uh, there was great participation from our county government in our budget process this year, which I do think led to a better understanding of our needs. And as a result, we were given a, additional funds to what we were told a year ago that we would receive. So that is the revenue side of the budget. And that is a fixed figure at this point. You can't decide tonight anything that would increase the revenue for the school system. Your decision tonight is simply on how to spend the money that's been allocated to our district. We have put a budget process in place that began back, I guess, November, December last year. It was extremely thorough. Ms. Klutz has led us in that process. We have trimmed fat for five years. This year, it cut to the bone, as, as, you, as you said, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if we did not release 120 teacher assistants, we would have to release approximately 40 is that close to correct teachers so if you have a suggestion tonight for the budget that would say we want you to add back 120 teachers assistance then we need to hear 
what 40 teachers in the district you would prefer for us to cut. We think we've made the wise choice. Our volunteers can still volunteer regardless of your budget. Our APs can still work in the classroom regardless of your budget. You can't give us back 50% of the supplies money that the state took away. It is not within your power. And you still, after adopting this budget tonight, can decide if you wanted to give a small bonus to employees. It is very clear. We need you to adopt a budget, and we think we have a very clear process in place. It's a very frugal budget, and I'm extremely proud of our finance department, and I recommend it to you tonight to adopt the budget that we place before you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shepard. And just one more comment from myself before we vote on this, and that would be uh, to you, Ms. Klutz, because as I think about it, had we not been in the financial situation that we were in, to appropriate $3 million out of our fund balance, where would we be? You know, that's a question for you board members to be thinking about. If we didn't have the $3 million, where would we be? We would be like some of the other school districts looking at each other and wondering what we're going to do. But see, with your leadership and, you know, you showing us what you do, you do your magic. I'm glad I'm not a CPA, but I can look at numbers, though. And I appreciate everything you've done. And, uh, you know, but anyway, with that being said, we need to, uh, I'd, I'd like to call for a motion that our budget resolution be adopted for $244 million for 2013-2014 school year. So moved. Mr. Kiger makes the motion. Second. Mr. Harrison seconds the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, the motion carries 6-0. Thank you, Ms. Klutz. Thank you. Well, I, I'm sorry? 6-1. Six, one. Six, one. I don't know where I get that 6-0. I always call Carolyn a zero. She's not a zero. <laughs> Carolyn, I declare. I, I don't mean any personal harm there, but uh, it was 6-1 with Ms. Carpenter descending. Well, I thought surely we had her convinced we had to approve this thing, but that's all right, though. Okay, we'll move on to 9.2, and this is uh, Dr. Louder. Uh, coming to the podium, and uh, we're going to talk about policy number 1740. I think all the other ones have been uh, passed, and so, Dr. Louder, if you'd go ahead and this Yes, sir, that's the policy. Uh, just a quick summary. Um, we do have two members of our school board that are on our policy committee. That's Ms. Carpenter and Mr. Harrison. Uh, this this policy has been discussed at the policy committee um, with, with them present. Um, and Mr. Walters has some concerns, I think, about some of the wording with the, with the policy. Um, I know that Ms. Stone and Mr. Enriquez worked on some of that. Um, they also put a cross-reference in to 5001, which I think the attorneys felt like um, addressed Mr. Walters' concern. Um, after that was put in, I think he still had some concerns, and that's what brought us here to the action agenda for you guys to vote. I don't, and Mr. Enriquez may want to speak to um, some of those changes and what exactly they they put in place to address his concerns. Ms. Dondreke, if you feel so, you can go ahead if you've got any further comments. I think I know, I know one of the Mr. Walter's questions was what about, right now it's structured as a student and parent grievance, and I know there was a question about a community grievance. And I guess as we looked at it and I looked at other policies, it would be our recommendation not to have a community grievance. I think you, you can hear guest speakers at your meeting if they're concerned, but I think I don't think we need a procedure where you know a concerned community member can necessarily come forward for a formal grievance hearing. And I just worry that that may be a, a challenge for the the resources. So that's that's I think my recommendation would be to leave it structured this way. There may be certain instances, obviously rezoning of a child or some other things that are maybe covered you know, through public hearing process or through other grievance processes. But, I, and I know there may be something else Mr. Walters had a question about too, but I know that was one thing that I talked to Ms. Stone about. Well, I mean, for, for me reading through this policy and as a member of the public, and this goes back to our other um, policy that went back to committee as far as the facility use, use, what we had said is if there was an issue where someone did not get to use that facility for some reason, this is the policy they've got to go to go through to file a grievance and what it is is a student and parents grievance policy well that entity or whatever that may not have been able to get an opportunity to, to use that facility is not a student is not a parent it's a community member so what we had done and I, what I had mentioned that last time when we added this 5001 reference but we did not do anything to the to the policy to make it broad enough to, to cover a community member um, so my suggestion and what I don't like about this if we should if we have a community 
member that wants to file a grievance, there ought to be some community member grievance policy. Because if I'm a community member and I come and I see the look at this and I read through it, it doesn't it doesn't seem to apply to me because I'm not a student or not a parent. So that's the trouble I have with it. I just think it's it's confusing to folks, especially when this other policy comes out and there might be some issues with it. Thank you, Mr. Walter. Board members, do we have any other questions reference policy number 1740? Okay, hearing none, do I have a motion that policy uh, 1740 be approved on a second reading? So moved. Okay, Mr. Shoemaker makes the motion it be approved. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Kiger seconds the motion. All in favor of this policy being approved on the second reading say aye. Uh, any opposed say no. No. Okay, looks like we got 5-2 with Mr. Phillips and Mr. Walter dissenting. Okay, thank you, Mr. Louder. Okay, we're moving on down to 9.3 on the action agenda, and this is where Mr. Uh, Burnett will talk to us about the J. Robinson High School Fieldhouse. You know, we talked about this last week, and we asked um, Mr. Wickey and Mr. Burnett if they would go back to the drawing board, talk to the architect and to the contractor, the low bidder, and see if we could find some value engineering and find a, a way to utilize the funds that are available without having to add any more funds to this, funds that are not available. So at this time, I'd like to ask um, Dave Burnett, if you will, go ahead and address the board with your comments, and thank you. Yes, thank you, and I will try to be brief. I know that you've heard this uh, item from uh, last week, uh, but much has happened uh, since then, and I'm pleased to, to inform you that we do have a proposal that uh, is within the budget, uh, but let me first talk about the budget, and then I'll talk about the, uh, the scope, the proposed scope. The uh, breakdown of the budget is really $330,000, now, which is about 86 percent uh, of the budgeted funds come from the county and the school system funds. Uh, the private donations um, account for uh, 50 at this time it was $53,689. We do have the good news for Mr. Jones that uh, uh, more private donations are on the way. And that is actually you know, very good news. We do want to uh, you know, encourage you know, that and have uh, more such funding uh, coming our way, um, that uh, currently they're at 14% uh, of the uh, of the budget makeup. Uh, these funds are going to be applied to the construction phase of the work. Uh, project funds encumbered to date, it's uh, $38,458.42, um, and that uh, that includes the topographic survey, uh, soil borings, advertisements for bid, uh, and design fees. If you have any questions on those particular items, I can go into detail. Um, if, uh, if you take a look at the attachment uh, the, um, at the screen, you'll see uh, what the revised scope um, is. Uh, the, um, we're generally, we're able to, uh, to build all of the exterior shell as was designed. We did not have to shrink the, uh, the footprint, uh, which we were very happy not to have to do. We think for the long term that that's going to be the best uh, for the for the facility. Um, we do include all of the under slab work that includes thickened uh, footings and underground utilities, all the exterior doors and windows. Um, we are able to also add masonry walls. If you look at the attachment, you'll see the uh, the masonry walls that are in the center of the facility. Um, those will uh, separate the two locker rooms. And, um, and it also constructs a meeting room. The, the meeting room will be conditioned. Uh, the rest of the building will have exhaust. Uh, otherwise, no HVAC and no plumbing is included in this. But remember, we do have the rough-ins so that uh, in the future, uh, when the funding does arrive, we will be positioned uh, to be able to more easily add that to it. Uh, electrical will include uh, lights and uh, switches and convenience outlets where uh, it was already plan to be in the walls that are going to uh, be constructed. Obviously, those that are not going to be constructed, it's not in that. Future expenses include construction materials testing, special inspections, construction contract administration, and <clears throat> change orders uh, you know, that either take care of unforeseen conditions 
uh, or um, as we are able to add back uh, scope to the project as additional funds uh, are identified. The goal is to add back to the project you know, everything that, that funds will allow. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Burnett. As you and I talked earlier today, had a quite lengthy conversation about this because obviously it's been a concern of the board and it's been an ongoing thing as Mr. Jones had, you know, brought out to us tonight for a number of years. And, uh, but I appreciate the effort that you and Mr. Wickey made to get a solution to this so we can all move on and be in a win-win situation. Um, and, and with it being under budget, like it is, you know, it, that the difference between what the actual build price is and what the money is available, it's about $22,000, $23,000, which could be used to add back if, it, you know, there's no unexpected circumstances that arise. But one of the things that I wanted to make the board aware of, because I've got, I got emails, I know all of you got emails, and one of the emails in particular was, saying that they felt like that and, and i'm just saying this for clarification just to make sure everybody's on the same page and we don't have people thinking differently and that is that you know we don't want to pay for plans that cabarrus county school system is going to use to build other schools a, a field state a stadium and to clarify that the the work that's been done thus far according to your conversation with me today, has been site-specific for Jay Robinson. Yes. That's correct. It's site-specific, the soil borings, the soil testings, and all the different things, the topographical surveys, uh, the design, and all of that based on the way the, the ground is there at Jay Robinson. The only thing that possibly could be used at some point of what has been expended already is the floor plan. But my thoughts are, and I'll entertain the board's thoughts as well on this, and that is I don't think that it would be conducive to this board to say, yeah, we want to use these plans at other schools because we don't know what fundraising efforts are going to be made at other schools. We don't know what their goals are. We don't know anything about any of that. And we surely don't want to pay for plans that get laid up on a shelf somewhere hoping that we might use them sometime in the future. And I, I wouldn't support that. But, uh, but anyway, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, the fundraising efforts that the Jay Robinson boosters and parents and all is commendable. There's no question about it. But the other schools have done the same thing. Central's done that for years and years and years. Northwest has done it. Others, Mount Pleasant's done it. And Jay Robinson, of course, is a relatively new school. And as I've made mention before, it was an alternate when the school was built because I was on the board then. It was an alternate. The funding wasn't there, so we had to cut that alternate off. But now, you know, there's a, a situation that we have where we can put four walls up in a concrete slab and say, at least we got this, and then they can build on that. You can always add. And so anyway, with that being said, I hope I covered some of the things that we talked about today to try to better clarify, you know, the circumstances at Jay Robinson. So with all that being said, I'd like to open it up for the board to discuss this for a few minutes. And uh, we've discussed it and discussed it and discussed it. But the, for the first time, we, we're under budget. So we can do this now. We yes. can do this. So we'll start on uh, Mr. Phillips' side if you want to make your comments or questions in reference to, the, to this uh, proposal tonight. But, uh, in any case, yeah. you want to use my maybe that's it I, I'm just going to echo uh, Chairman Shu's comments that I'm really happy that you and the, the team were able to find a, a solution that, that fits within the budget and, and I hope that uh, once this this project you know, really starts to come out of the the ground and and you can see it is a reality that that will be a big spur to help the fundraising efforts and that they, they can fill in the insides as well as build the outsides. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Mr. Harrison. Mr. Burnett, build this field house, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. Mr. Walter. I think my comments are more along the lines of what was said uh, earlier today about no playbook and folks telling if someone's trying if a group is trying to get together to build a project or do something that they don't 
we're not consistent, we're not showing them, we're telling them three different, four to five different things. You know, maybe we need a policy or some type of procedure uh, for folks at other schools. I'm sure we have the track issue, we've got sensor comparisons, we have all these different places where folks want to contribute and make a partnership arrangement with us, but we don't have any kind of a process. And then we get these accusations that we're favor favoring this group or we're favoring that group or we've done money for here. I, th I think we need to really address that in the next uh, something that ought to be on our priority list to try to address. But thank you again for finding a solution to at least get this thing, at least get a shell up here where we can continue to, they can continue in the future to make this a nice facility. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walter. Mr. Kiger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dave, you and Lynn, uh, you should be commended for taking, you asked last week for flexibility. I think that's what we, we tried to give you and you, you, you wrestled it down and got where we can grab it and go. Um, I th you know, obviously the important piece is the size didn't change. You've got a slab, you've got under slab plumbing that's, that, that's going that can be attached later. There'll be something that we wish we had done before we poured the concrete, but I've never been on a project that that didn't happen. So we just, we know that going in, but um, get, get it, grab it and, and go. And um, I, I will take one second to, to I, I'm, I'm glad in May, we talked about contributing some funds to this. At the time, um, it, it was a pretty adamant discussion amongst this board. I'm glad we did to take the action that we did, although we have, been, we, we have received our fair share of criticism because, in all fairness, Central built their own, Northwest built theirs, Concord <coughs> built theirs, and I, I don't. And, and Mount Pleasant's the only one that got one from the school. But I understand that the, 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 where those people that contributed that, where they're coming from, and some of that bled over last week to what we heard from from folks at Central, and trying to get these facilities all together it's a it's a it's a difficult it's a difficult task but I think what we did in, in helping when the county pitched in some money I think adding to that was the right thing to do and I'm glad we did that to help get this project where it is today so that we can now reward a lot of effort by a lot of people out at Robinson to say here you go you know well done of at least getting some funds together so you can put this thing um, in the ground and get it going so Thank you for all your hard work, and hopefully this will turn out to be uh, just the, the catalyst of even more fundraising that they can, they can have exactly the facility that they want. Thank you, Mr. Kiger. Ms. Carpenter, you have your comments? Oh, yes. Thank you. You did what I said. Uh, and I'm ready to make a motion. Uh, and I, I want to be the one to do it. And I'm ready to go. You know I'm ready. I was ready last week. Uh, so I am, I am, I'm really, I want to get on with it. 2009 is a long time to wait. So I want to see, I'd love to be the first one to turn to dirt. So I'm ready to go with it. And I'm glad that y'all were able to get where we need to be. And like I say, I think those parents, and I want to thank everybody that's done it, but I can't wait to when that first brick goes down there. And I'm, I'm like I say, I'm ready to make the motion. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. There's I, no I think the brick got cut and it's block, so you might have to lay a block. Well, I'll lay a block. I'll even help them. I'll put the mortar in it. Let's, and, and I do know how to do that because I've worked out at Mount Pleasant and I've done some mortar, so I can actually do that. So if you'd like for me to help, I will. Well, I think anybody can milk a cow can sure enough lay a block. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Shoemaker, what's your questions, comment? Oh. Again, I appreciate what you guys, what you and Lynn have done working with the contractor, and that'll be Holden, right, as our contractor. Yes. And they're the ones that are doing the Northwest Gymnasium. And Concord. And Concord. And I really appreciate their flexibility in trying to work with us to, to make this come a reality. One question on the electrical. When, you, when we install the re electrical there, there will be enough power in the building to, for future if they want to install air conditioning and can get the money, then it will have the power support at the panel to support anything else that goes on. The, the panels are, are still in the contract. Okay, good. Well, let's get a motion. I know Carolyn wants, she's just chomping at the bit, and uh, I'll be glad to second it, but if anybody else wants to have that honor, they can do that as well. I make a motion that we approve the recommendation that they have uh, that you've made. Uh, I think the contractor's revision, uh, revised proposal was at 323. 
Is that what you've got or just your recommendation? It's $323,205. Five. I would make their, that recommendation to start the project. Go with it. Okay. Ms. Carpenter makes the motion that we approve the, um, the bid of $323,205 to the Holden Company. And um, do I have a second? So moved. Mr. Harrison seconds the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? See, I knew all along this board wanted to get this project done. We just had to work within our means. And uh, unfortunately, you know, sometimes you can't do that. But this case, though, I believe we, we did, did a good job. And sometimes wisdom comes with patience. So I thank all of you for working. You do diligence and all the work that you've done. Everybody combined made this happen. So once again, thank you, Mr. Burnett. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing some news about groundbreaking sometime before too awful long. Okay. All right, the next item we have is 9.4. And if the cameraman, you want to take just a few seconds and change the tape out? Okay. Okay, Mr. Okay. Yeah, I was going to try to finish it out before our time run out. He tried to change around 8, but I figured maybe we might need to just go ahead and do that. So anyway, uh, we're going to talk now about the uh, Ryan Holmes wanting to put a uh, utility easement across some of our schools. So go ahead, Mr. Burnett. You can tell us about that. Yes, and again, this is a, an item that you heard last week, so I can um, kind of skip to, uh, to what's happened since then. Uh, the developer uh, heard your message, um, and in the spirit of cooperation, they have offered to add to the previous offer of $3,188 by agreeing to construct an emergency access road that will connect Patriots and C.C. Griffin schools. The road will be uh, 12 feet wide and consist of six inches of compacted ABC stone. Um, that was one of the uh, one of the concerns that the school system had uh, was we did want to have that future connection ability. Uh, here they're actually going to be uh, offering to construct the road. It will be a gravel road. Um, the um, the provisions of the uh, of the offer are in an in an attachment. Um, the uh, one thing it does note is some time frames. It does want the work to take place by. Uh, their work by December 31st, 2013. Of course, we wouldn't uh, have any objection to that. Um, they are uh, seeking uh, the uh, easement um, to be recorded uh, and completed um, by September 30th, 2013. Thank you, Mr. Burnett, for checking with the contractor on that. And, um, you know, any time that you know, the, the, the price for the land really we didn't think was all that much, but doing what we've asked them to do now, that sort of makes it a little bit more beneficial to the school system by having that drive and the emergency exit. And so, and that was one of the real concerns of the board. And so I appreciate you taking the time to get that worked out. With that being said, board members, do you have any further questions or comments before we vote on this, allowing Ryan Holmes to have this easement? I have this one. Um, Mark, do you think that's a, a doable date? <laughs> I think it is. I mean, they've already proposed the, the easement. We'll just need to review it. But I, I, I think that's workable to get it done by the 30th. If the board approves it tonight, I think we should be able to do that. I'll work with our real estate folks. to. That, I think that's doable. What, uh, Dave, when should we expect to see uh, um, the additional connection on, on a graph to just let us know how that's coming because you know obviously this is the uh, the, the um, rendition that we saw last week about the easement and right. also in this is giving back the old easement that that was in green we received the old easement yeah we get the old easement back and yes. give them this one and we get thirty one hundred and eighty eight dollars and we get a a road connecting to CC Griffin that's right um, we haven't talked time frame on the design of the uh, of the road, uh, but certainly between Friday and today, you know, there wasn't time. That right. They have to do surveying, things like that. Uh, but uh, really, we would expect uh, an exhibit you know, within the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I would just, you know, a part of this would be making sure that that, pre that piece is followed up with you guys, with, with the FMD department, 
not that this board has to be, but we just want to make sure that that, that portion is, is taken care of in the design right. before they start breaking ground. That's a good point. And we, we want to make sure that we're clear on what we expect the road to look like so there's not an issue, you know, before we give them the easement. I think that's what Mr. Shoemaker's saying, and I agree. We'll want, we'll need that. That They need to, we need to work to make sure that's ready by the 30th so we give them the easement. And we have, you mentioned some things with gravel and, and other stuff. I just want it sufficient. We may not have to have it, you know, the exact location, but I think specification wise, some understanding between both sides as to what the road will be is a good idea yeah, and and our concern of course was you know where is it going to be located we think we know where it should be located we have to come to agreement uh, again the survey is going to bear out you know uh, really what the limitations are going to be and specifically where you know where the best location for it to go is we won't know that till we get the survey information think they I know they've said they can finish by the end of the year if we approve by September 30th if we shift I mean would they be amenable to shifting both those dates by a month if we needed to in other words give them till the end of January and give us till the end of October or are they on a pretty tight timetable I can't speak for them uh, but I will be happy to, to ask that question okay. uh, it works for us right. so we'll, we'll be happy to ask okay thank you gentlemen are there any other comments from the board questions Okay, I'll entertain a motion that the uh, proposal by Ryan Holmes to obtain a new permanent utility easement across a portion of Patriot Elementary School be approved as it is presented. I'll make that motion. Mr. Shoemaker makes the motion. Second. Mr. Walter seconds it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Okay, motion carries 7 0. All right, thank you, Mr. Burnett. The next item you have that also is the camera. Uh, systems at the six of our schools and I think this is some relatively good news as well and so mr. Burnett when you get ready you can go ahead and talk to us about this yes thank you this is uh, very good news uh, we did receive six bids on September 12th for the purchase and installation of the video IP system which is the security camera and recording system at uh, Jane Robinson High School Central Cabarrus High School Concord High School Mount Pleasant High School the Glen Center and late uh, to, to the mix was uh, Northwest Cabarrus High School. Uh, the apparent low bidder is Security 101 with the base bid of $623,236.81 and bid alternates 1A through 1F, uh, uh, which total $6,000. Bid alternate number two at $65,000. Bid alternate number three at $40,000. Um, give you some detail bid alternate alternate number one uh, was for the removal of the existing cameras at each of the schools bid alternate number two was for the extended warranties and service uh, bid alternate number three was for the contractor to provide the IT department's preferred system the school systems preferred system which was uh, Panduit um, and uh, um, had the price come in too high uh, we had a uh, bid alternate number four uh, which was a deductive bid alternate to pull out Northwest High School. Uh, but we're very happy that uh, the prices came in even to include Northwest High School and that that won't be necessary. Uh, the project utilizes uh, county one-time funds and the budget is $831,240. The, uh, the superintendent recommendation uh, is to award the contract to Security 101 for the sum total for the base bid and bid alternates uh, 1, 1A through 1F, uh, 2 and 3 for $734,236.81. Thank you, Mr. Burnett. The difference, the only question I have, then I'll open it up for the board. This was one time funding from the county. Yes. And since they allotted 831000 to the board for this, which was what we expected it would cost. Now that it's only going to be 734, I'm supposing they'll want to keep that money and reappropriate that. Is that correct? We will be asking the county. Uh, if we'll we can, ask them to do that <laughs> if we can. If we can, you know, if those funds can stay with the school system. Right. Uh, we did talk with the school system. Lynn Wickey did talk with the uh, with the county uh, originally when the when we bid this as five schools and the numbers came in very favorably to add the next, the next school and they were amenable to that. So, you know, we'll ask. Well. You can't you, you can't you can't go wrong asking right. I, I learned a long time ago if you don't ask a lot of times you don't get but uh, anyway board members do you have any uh, discussion that you want to talk about on this and you know, we've talked about it before and I think it's an excellent uh, situation that we found ourselves in here for a change 
and I'll open it up for questions and we'll start on Mr. Shoemaker's side. If you have questions, we'll move on otherwise. I think this is a great opportunity. I'm glad that we we're able to get six high schools rather than just five. And uh, so I don't have anything else to offer. Thank you, Mr. Shoemaker. Ms. Carpenter. Well, that was my question. After all, we heard last week from Central and the needs that they have with bleachers and bathrooms and the things like that and all the needs we heard for roofs and everything else. That's why I was wondering if we had anything extra of that sort, whether we could start putting it into the roofs, the bleachers, the bathroom. So, of course, we'll raise our hands and say, hey, we'd like to take it back so we can start putting it into those type projects. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. And what I really would like for us to do, Ms. Burnett, is after we've got confirmation from the county and let us know how much funds are available, and then, the, uh, you know, you guys can bring us back some type of a recommendation based on what the needs are, some of these things that we've been hearing about, even tonight, and Central, and um, all the other things, if we can use it for that. But you can need to bring us back a recommendation sometime. I guess that'll probably be in either October, November, or sometime. But uh, it might even be after this project is finished. Does this amount here have any type of a contingency built in it? That's a, that's a firm price. It, it does have contingency built in. It also has unit prices uh, built into the contract, uh, and those are for different camera types. It's really as we get into the uh, construction as we're uh, being able to see the, the areas. And it's it's just in case we have uh, an area that we just don't like the, the coverage uh, and feel we need an additional camera, it's already set as to, you know, um, what uh, what the price would be for the additional camera. Right. And that, that's where that contingency would come in if it yes. went over and above that. Okay. Yes. Well, that's great. But this is the total amount there. But the contingency is built in. So that's great. Mr. Kiger, you have any comments? Just one quick question. I, I, due to the nature of the electronic devices that we're doing, is that why, I mean, is that why you recommend we get the extended service? Uh, it is. It is. And, and plus, really, the, the operating dollars for repair, um, you know, haven't grown, uh, as uh, Mr. Shoemaker mentioned you know, earlier. Uh, we are adding, you know, many, many cameras, you know, to the system. Uh, so really, as we look in the future, uh, we need additional funding uh, for for that type of effort. And that, um, uh, so this will help, certainly, with that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kiger. Mr. Walter. Yeah, I'd like to see our security funds remain security funds. Um, there was a number of schools that we need, needed new cameras, is that correct? This is not all of them. This is just a portion of we still have more to go. That's correct. And in light of what happened last year and what happened you know, today in Washington, I think we ought to keep our finger on the security aspect of things and getting our schools secure. Uh, there's vestibules, vestibules also we have that we need to get done that are, not, that are still on the project list. Um, and work That's, is progressing on that. It's a different project. Right. But yes. But they're still a security-related project. So. Yes. Those were just, I'd just like to keep the security funds towards the security fund, security projects. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walter. Mr. Harrison. I'm torn between crossing my fingers that the county will let us keep the funds and um, not counting chickens before they're hatched, but to the extent that we um, hopefully will retain those funds um, in, in agreement with Mr. Walter uh, about um, the use of those funds potentially. Um, but certainly for security reasons, I wish um, that when you bring a recommendation to us that you might bring options to us, several recommendations to us once we uh, establish that we st still have um, access to those funds. Um, I, li I like to hear options as opposed to a single recommendation, but um, if um, you could consider that approach, I, I certainly would appreciate it, again, if we get those funds. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. Mr. Phillips. Well, I looked at the uh, bid amounts. I'm rather uh, amazed at the uh, price that Security 101 is offering. They're uh, probably 50% of what the highest bidder offered. Do we have a track record with Security 101? Yes. Okay, so we know that, that in, at least in the past, they've been able to deliver what they promise for the price that they promise? Yeah, and the thing I would say is this is a different approach. This is a different bid. It's a different design. Um, and the, um, 
the Security 101 reps are very familiar and very aware of what is required by this by these bid documents. Okay. So you're thinking that maybe some of the others weren't as aware and therefore put a, a, a contingency cushion into their bids and that's why they're higher. <clears throat> well, uh, fortunately, you know, we, we did bid this project earlier. Um, and, and this is a, a rebid. Mm -hmm. um, so really, anybody who left, uh, often you know, um, those who went through their estimates and saw that they they missed something, mm -hmm. uh, they had that opportunity to to correct that. Yep. And of course, they had to be mindful of the bid climate. Uh, but uh, we do think that everything's covered. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Board members, are there any further discussion or questions? Just one comment. Just for Dr. Phillips, um, this uh, 101 company that's working with us is currently on, cam on our ca on, in our campuses working and doing camera projects now, and they're right in Charlotte, so they, they've already kind of mobilized in a way, and this project wouldn't be as much of a, a burden on them as it might be some of the other bidders in the process. Would you Curren agree with that? Currently, they are working uh, with us. They have... Uh, they uh, received. Um, they were awarded a bid for five um, schools, and I believe they were elementary schools. So they're currently working on five yes. schools now. So this yes, will be sir. eleven schools in the end. Yes. Okay. Okay, board members, do I have a motion that the new security camera system projects at Central Barris High School, Concord High School, J. M. Robinson High School, Mount Pleasant High School, the Glenn Center? An additional camera system at Northwest Cabarrus High School be awarded as presented to Security 101, the low bidder, at a cost of $734,236.81. Do I have that motion? So moved. Mr. Walter makes the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Kiger seconds the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. I got that zero right this time. And it wasn't. And it wasn't. And it wasn't you. <laughs> okay. All right, board members. The last item. <laughs> She's Carolyn's a hole now. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. The uh, last item on the agenda tonight, board members, is 9.6, and this is the approval to submit training hours to the North Carolina School Board Association. Uh, Miss Carpenter has 11 hours, and Mr. Harrison has two hours, and we'd like to. Um, receive a motion that we approve these training hours and get them sent down so these folks can get credit for their training hours. Do I have such a motion? So moved. Yes. Yeah, this is iPad training. This is different. Wait a minute. Hold it. I, missed, I must have missed something here. Training certificate. Okay. Hmm. Okay. She had left this one off. I see. And I, I do recall getting your email from that now. Okay. Do I have a motion that this be approved as presented? So moved. Mr. Phillips gives us the motion. Mr. Uh, did you second? No, I'm just not. What are we approving? That we actually will print her no. certificate and hand no, it to no, her? No, 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 no. no. This one I had, I went to training, and this is the certificate she printed. Well, well, let me I, look. I, I will second whatever we whatever it is we're doing. And she's okay, using well, an she, iPad at this has, very moment. So I, here's, I'll, very skillful. I'll read to you what Miss Monroe put down for the act, for the action item, and then we, and then you decide. I need a motion that the board approve the submission of three training hours for board member Carolyn Carpenter for iPad workshop attendance on July 22nd. But the deal we had last week that we discussed had Car Ms. Carpenter and Mr. Harrison in there. Yeah, one had 11 hours and one had two hours. That was, that was okay, we, okay, so we done covered that on consent. Okay, well, I thought we had something else. I don't know how I missed that. Well, my bad, okay. All right, so there's the motion. Do I have a, do I have a motion? Am I gonna approve second. the motion? And I got a second. All in favor say aye. All right, I think we got through that one there. Yeah, you're whole again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, well, you're right. Well, 
board members and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you that's in the audience and those that's uh, viewing this by television, um, it's time for us to conclude our open session portion of the meeting tonight. And I'll call for a motion that we convene in closed session pursuant to General Statute 143-318.11, A3, and A6. Do I have such a motion? We so convene. moved. Mr. Harrison made the motion. Ms. Carpenter second. All in favor say aye. aye. Okay. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you back in October. Good night. <laughs>